oh, Amazon gives you five sentences of how much they care about you, and then they give you the answer you don't want. <laughs> Robert, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite interviews ever. Selling on Amazon is not passive income, which is why you're here listening to me. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. In clips like you'll see today, we talk to Amazon sellers and ask them about the pains they experience. We offer solutions. We talk about PPC, SEO, design, and catalog troubleshooting. Enjoy. Oh. Robert, next, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, good good back. to see you again. <laughs> again. Um, can you hear me? I can. Okay. What's your question? Um, I wanted to ask again about UPCs. I just I just enjoy being on the show. But uh, quick question. If you guys have had success opening cases in brand registry to get UPCs changed on listings. I've done it on Fellow Central and Vendor Central. Mixed results, of course. If you're persistent enough, you usually win. Um, I'm wondering if I should just add brand registry to that repertoire of getting attributes on any attribute unchanged. So I would say, Robert, it's it's the hardest thing to do on a catalog right now is to change UPC codes. Yeah. <laughs> there are many different techniques you can employ right now. And, and quite frankly, I would encourage all of them. Yes. Why? Because Amazon is not consistently giving a single path to success. 100%. That, that applies to all of Amazon, though. <laughs> Everything you do on Amazon. There's no consistency. <laughs> there really isn't. Sometimes we all wonder what Amazon's doing over there. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, what? why are you doing this to me? I don't understand. Yeah. You like, our, our success rate on cases for UPC is right in line with yours, 15, 20%-ish. Yes. Um, so so, so I'll, I'll go off topic for just a brief moment. I, I, I purchased a hundred, excuse me, a thousand of these hot sauce bottles. This is a five pound hot sauce bottle. I'm holding it by hand, very wow. heavy and it's glass. I yeah. spent $1,500 designing this nice label right here. I ship it into Amazon and I pay them to do the prep work. Oh God. And some of you know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then they bubble wrapped it. Cool. I'm happy so far. And then they put the F and SKU label on it because I asked them to do that. I'm happy so far. And then they shipped it in padded envelopes. They didn't ship it in boxes. What the frick, Amazon? Like, so, so if they do that on the logistics side, it's of no question that they do the same stupid, idiotic catalog things on UPC codes. Oh, little off tangent thing about the glass bottle, just to mention. Yeah. They have locked out the ability to fill in is fragile in the flat files on most categories. Nice. But if you, can, if you can get it to say true, it will force them to use a box. <laughs> there are there are tricks to do it. It's a little grayish. I don't where, know. But. Where, were, where were you three years ago when I needed it? <laughs> you know, it used to be a field called ships in own container, SIOC. And you could open a seller support case and ask them to flip the switch on that. And then it would force them to use a box all the time. And technically, if that switch is flipped, I think it relates to the fragile flag in the flat files. I'm not 100% sure. But most categories, you can't touch that fragile flag. They lock it. They put conditional formatting on it. And I don't know if you take it, the conditional formatting off and then you flip the switch if it works or not. I haven't A-B tested it. You guys can do it and put a video out. I would love that. <laughs> Anyway, back to the UPC so, thing. <laughs> so, so Robert, this is the first time I've ever heard about this, and I'm fascinated. And yeah. and now I, I want to go relaunch. Yeah. I really want to go relaunch my hot sauce bottle. Now I have a warehouse and all kinds of other fun, more profitable yeah. ventures. But I, I, I haven't researched the SIOC flag, what flat file field it relates to. But when I would open seller support cases, they would talk about ships in own container, SIOC flag. I'm. I'm surprised that I hadn't learned this yet. Thank you for teaching me something today, Robert. I did not know that you still exist or currently exists. Well, I've okay. learned enough from your videos and podcasts and trying to keep up. So that was <laughs> so a really good that. tip Robert just gave. All right, let's, let's go back to UPCs though. So, so there are various ways you can change a UPC right now. Uh, you can try doing it by flat file. I say try because it doesn't really work. work. Zero success rate. <laughs> Uh, the second way is to file tickets in various capacities and contacting seller support, brand registry support, vendor support. The third way is to create a new ASIN and then to merge the two ASINs together. 
And of all of those techniques I just mentioned, the last one, the merging, is the one that we are finding the most success with. So can you elaborate on that? Because I've been kind of reluctant to do the merge technique. I know it. Um, I've been somewhat reluctant to do it. Um, you've had success merging two ASINs that have differing UPCs, just telling Amazon they're the same product? Correct. Uh, so what you do is you create a new product, you load the new UPC to it, make sure the brand name matches, of course. And then, uh, then you submit a ticket and say, please merge these two. And you merge the old into the new. Now, there's consequences to doing this. And by the way, I'm pulling up on screen. If, if anybody's so frustrated with this, they just want to hire Mag to take care of it for you. We will do that, no problem. Uh, cost is $500 per ASIN. We are super expensive. Why? Because it's freaking painful. And you're hearing Robert talk about this pain right now. Uh, and so, but if you need it, we're here for you. But in terms, if you want to go it alone, I'm, I'm all for giving out free advice. That's what we do. Uh, that's why we have these shows. So if you want to go it alone, the best technique right now is to create a duplicate uh, ASIN and merge the two SKUs. Now, merge what's the, the two language? ASIN. You use, you say, so you, you have to say, I used to say things like the surviving ASIN should be this. Is that what you say? Is that how you say it? How do you phrase it? Because. Yes. Um, you want to merge ASIN A into ASIN B. And, the, and, and in my opinion, we're having the most success when the B ASIN is the new UPC. Uh, now, having said all that, Amazon messes up mergers. Oh, yeah. That's why I want to be specific about the language. I yeah. always, my cases are never more than one sentence when I open Smart. Salesforce cases. Smart. <laughs> one sentence. Robert, Robert giving better tips than me today. Never say please, never say thank you, never use any euphemisms or any kind of um, politeness language. It's a waste of time. Although Amazon gives you five sentences of how much they care about you, and then they give you the answer you don't want. <laughs> Robert, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite interviews ever. And this, is, this and, has been fun. So merging I, has been very successful. Oh, oh, I, 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 I got to add my compliment real quick. I, I would put you in charge of Amazon support if I had a magic wand right now. <laughs> and and I, would, oh, no. I would put you in charge of him and say, Robert said, don't put wasted text. Just be efficient. Don't, don't be Tarzan. No too much word. Yeah, no. Because if seller support would do that for me as a service, I would I would be very very happy. Yeah. All right. You you're about to say. So I was going to say so merging has been your most successful because we do have some ASINs I want to merge to. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having more real estate, more organic real estate, having two ASINs because we have legacy brands that we're cleaning up. So there might be two two pack ASINs that sell kind of well. I kind of want to keep both of them because it's more real estate. You know, more keyword if real estate. So, so there's a lot of theory to talk about to get through this particular topic. If you're a brand owner, there is almost no benefit to having duplicate ASINs out in the wild. Almost none. There are some exceptions to that. Really? Yeah. Because let's say you have two products and they're both at rank 100,000 BSR. If you merge them together, the chances of them being 30,000 BSR just went up by 5x. Why? Because all of the sales are hitting the same ASIN and it will snowball faster. Uh, There's, there are exceptions to this rule. The exceptions include if both ASINs are in the top, say 25,000 BSR they, and, they all have, are. They all and, are. They, and they have lots of good reviews. They do. <laughs> then <laughs> that's the problem. Then that would be a scenario where you might want to maintain both. Yeah. But that, when you that merge, do you lose correct. the reviews on one? When you See, merge, do you lose reviews on one of them? Typically, both 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 review sets are kept. I can't guarantee that, but that's how it's supposed well, to work. Hold. Okay. That, this has been helpful. And it's been fun. I'll be back next Thursday. Okay. All right. <laughs> Even if it's a more mundane Robert. question. Appreciate I, it. I mean, you're, you're adding value. You might as well launch the next podcast. Good job, Robert. If you do an SI, if you do a SIOC or a fragile flag video to show people, how, please tag me in it or something, or let oh, me know. Oh, you I'll guys have my clip, name. I'll probably clip you right into it. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks for coming on, Robert. We'll see you later. Slam that like and subscribe button and join me every Thursday, noon Eastern Standard Time, where you can watch Amazon sellers come on camera and ask me literally any question live. We'll see you then.